Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. This is how we train the mind. Give it something to do and watch over it to make sure that it does it. And we give it something harmless, something that actually is beneficial for it and for people around you. When you train your mind, you suffer less from mindlessness, forgetfulness, ill will, greed, anger. And of course the people around you are going to suffer less from your greed and anger and ill will and mindlessness as well. So even though the meditation is focused inside, it's, its results don't stay just inside, they ripple out into the world. And reflect on the fact that your actions are what shape your experience of the world. And they also have an impact on the people around you. You have to look after the source of the actions, i.e. the mind. It's the decisions we make, it's the intentions we follow. These are the things that shape our lives. The Buddha gives us instructions for how to shape them well. This is one of the reasons why we bow down to him. He's concerned about our happiness. And is concerned that we won't take our own happiness seriously enough. If you're really serious about happiness, you have to find a happiness that's harmless, one that doesn't harm you, doesn't harm anybody else. Because harmful happiness turns into misery. And if your happiness depends on other people's misery, they're, they're not going to stand for it. They're going to fight it, they're going to try to change it, which turns it into unhappiness too. So take a careful look at how you try to find happiness in life. I realize that the search has to start inside, getting the mind trained so they can see things more clearly, so it has a sense of well-being inside, so it's not constantly hungry and willing to do things out of hunger. It's when people are hungry that they can kill and steal and cheat and do all kinds of horrible things because the hunger is driving them. But if you have a sense of well-being, a sense of fullness inside, then you can be more careful in what you do, you say and think. Think about the long-term consequences. And that, the Buddha said, is the beginning of wisdom, realizing that long-term happiness is possible and that it's found through our own efforts. When you see that, then you're on the wise course to finding a happiness that really does last, because you understand the true source of happiness and pain, which lie inside the mind. And you also understand that the qualities of mind that can be developed to overcome those sources of pain, in other words, to win out over them, those lie in the mind as well. And the practice is a matter of digging them out and using them so they grow. It's like exercising your body. If you don't use your body, it gets weak. If you use it, it gets strong. If you exercise the good qualities of the mind, like mindfulness, alertness, a desire to really be harmless in your actions, those qualities grow and they become dominant in your life. So that your search for happiness really does yield happiness. And as I said, that happiness will have a ripple effect out into the world. All for the good.